go. So we are live. You should just write a script that does that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> and I have one of those uh, mind reading, you know, headsets attached to me, so I don't have even have the time. I just think about it. I'm a terrible enabler with you. Yes, you are. With that I use. Um, okay, so let's go back to the code. And where is it? Okay, well, I think it's in here as well. Uh, okay, I need to find out where my editor is located. Come on, where is it? There, there we go. Okay, so what you want to do, okay, first of all, um, if I want to print out the numbers in reverse, I only have to reverse the lines here. <coughs> If I reverse lines 24 and line 25, it will print out the list in the reverse order. Because it will go to the next one first, and when it comes back on its way back, it will print itself. Okay. So let me show you what the program does at this point, and then you know, we can talk about you know, how to implement it. Um, so at this point, you know, I have the main subroutine looks like this. Um, these lines here, from line 56 to line 59, is basically what you saw today in class. It will just read from standard in, integer by integer, and then you know, stuff those into the list. Um, the list is supposed to be self-sorting. Okay, So when I insert the list, I will insert it in the right place so that the list is sorted. And it does not store duplicate items. Okay, So that part, I have not changed yet. Okay, Or I would not change that part you know, in this assignment. What I have just added you know, in a few minutes was to write a new subroutine called print list. So this will make debugging a little bit easier because you can actually print it out. And print list is implemented here, and it is a significantly shorter subroutine compared to insert into list. So that's why I think it's a good practice because it is shorter. And then the logic is a lot simpler as well because you can see that it has a conditional statement because I have to stop the recursion at, that, at some point. And what I want to point out is, you know, if you reverse these two lines, it will print the list in the reverse order. Um, the way it is right now, it will print it in a sorted order. In other words, the first item in the list will be printed before the second one. All right, so this is the source code. Yep. Um, so you want us to implement print list and insert into list? Right. Okay. Both subroutines, but the first one, if you implement print list first, um, what you learn from doing that is going to be directly transferable to the second one. Do you want us to make the program like use the implemented the end assembly? Yes. Okay. So you actually want us to change that? Are you going to? Yes. You will have to one create additional files, and then two, you have to change the make file to make use of your subroutines. Oh, so you're making it really hard. No, it's not. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to run main by itself. You have to give it several numbers, like you know, seven, one, five, uh, three, ten. Okay, when you're ready to, when you're done, just you know, type Control D or press something or, t or enter something that is not a number. It will terminate the loop either way. So I'm just going to press Control D here, and you can see that after I press Control D, it prints out the number in the right order: one, three, five, seven, ten. It printed out all the numbers correctly in the right order. If I go back into the program and change the order of those two lines, um, oh, I just got past it. If I change the order of these two lines, it's going to print the numbers in reverse. So if I run it this time and give it exactly the same number, 7, 1, 5, 3, 10, and, D, and the control D, it prints the number in reverse. This is the really neat thing about recursion is, you know, it's very easy to make changes like these. Um, there are many other attributes that is really nice about recursion, but that's not the focus of the assignment. The focus of the assignment is how do we get the subroutine done. So let me go back to the program. Change it back because, you know, this is not your assignment. You know, your assignment is this part here. The first thing you want to do uh, is I would recommend the implementation of print list first because it is an easier subroutine, the logic is, is easier. Um, with print list, the first thing you need to do is to look at whatever P list is pointing to and see if that pointer is null or not. So you want to compare whatever P list is pointing to and see if that is zero. If it is zero, then there's nothing to do, you just return right away. If it is non-zero, then you have to go to the else branch and actually perform the operation of printing and whatnot. Are there any questions at this point? 
No questions? So it's pretty much printing first and reverse order this way just because we're printing before you put it in the same place. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's one, one really cool thing about recursion is you can flip the order just like that. Okay. Now to in 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 the in the case of trying to understand this program or what is p list or what is p list pointing to and stuff like that, um, there are several ways to there are several things that you can do to help you understand the program itself. Um, one way to do it is to run it through GDB. So you say GDB main, and then you do not write any code in assembly. You keep it all in C code, and then what you do is you take a look at the C code. And we want to list earlier parts of the program. So you look at the C code, and let's just say that I want to focus on print list. And I want to put a breakpoint on line 19 in this case. Okay. So I run the program, I give it a few numbers like 10, 5, 6. Oops, oh, that works. Um, it would actually have two numbers in this case because uh, 7y is not a valid number, so that would have terminated. It would not have read 7 as a number in this case. Um, so right now I'm in print list. So the first thing we want to do is to find out exactly what is pre, uh, p list. P list is a pointer to a pointer to a struct node. So the next thing we want to do is to say, but what is it, what is p list pointing to? P list is pointing to a struct node. Okay, sorry. Yep. Asterisk p list is a struct node pointer. So it is pointing to a struct node. Now the only the other thing that you might want to pay attention to is if you look at the address or if you look at what they the, the pointer themselves, they are different. They're very different. P list is pointing to a location that is on the stack. On the other hand, um, what it points to is something that is not on the stack because it is in the heap. So you want to kind of pay attention to all of these little things because when it is time to write your program in assembly, you also want to kind of make sense of these things and check, okay, am, is my pointer in the register pointing to the right place? Okay, so you want to kind of pay attention to all of this stuff. <clears throat> the reason why you know this is not this is on the stack is because this is the address of list in the main subroutine. And that is a local variable, and local variables live on the stack. Are we still doing okay so far? Okay. Now, once we know what is plist, we can also say, uh, what is that? Well, that is a that is a struct node itself. So you can now look at the content of the node. <clears throat> Are there any questions about you know how to use GDB to get a better understanding of the program? No questions. Okay. If I continue execution. It will continue execution until it gets to the same breakpoint. Because the subroutine is recursive, I'm going to stop. This is the second invocation of print list. How do I know this is the second invocation of print list? Backtrace. <laughs> okay, so backtrace is telling me that I am in print list right now, but I'm in here because I was called in print list. So this is really helpful because it tells you how many levels of recursion you're supposed to go until it stops. I will continue execution one more time and you know, do another you know, backtrace. So this time, you know, backtrace you know, shows that uh, we went from main into plist, plist calls plist, and then plist calls plist again. Yep. So it, when you do the backtrace, zero is basically the backtrace is from most recent to least recent. That is correct. Okay. The zero is basically saying you are you are current zero step away from the current call frame, and then the one means you're one frame away from the current call frame. Just making sure I understand. No, it's 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 very very useful. Not only does it tell you that you are called from print list, it also shows you which line that calls was was originating from. So. In this program, it's not that helpful because print list. There's only one place it does the recursion to call itself. Okay, but in general, that can be useful. So what I want to do now is to I want to look at you know, what p list itself is pointing to. It is not now at this point. Yep. Interesting thing. Yeah. It also looks like it gives you the address that p list is pointing to in the backtrace. It gives you okay. What this is is the parameter itself. 
so this is the parameter that is passed to this particular invocation of print list. This is the, the current one that I'm dealing with. So it looks like the T the seven was actually taken in, so the last one is actually a seven. So let me continue execution. And this time if I print what is PList pointing to, it should be a null. This is the last one. So it did take in three numbers, three different values. It, 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 but it just assumed the Y wasn't a part of it and threw it away? Right, it threw away the Y, but the seven before the Y was taken in as a number. Gotcha. Yep. Well, that makes sense, actually, in a way. Because mm, the structure, way. well, the structure is looking for an int. So whenever, from standard in, whenever it reads an int, mm -hmm. the, ne if the next thing that it reads is a character or something other that's not an integer. Right. Then it's just going to throw it away. Okay, so in terms of the implementation of the program, eventually you will have to deal with, you know, kind of nasty stuff like that. <laughs> right? Okay, so when you have nasty stuff like this, what do you do? Cry. You work yourself from the inside out. Okay, that is what you need to do, is to work this out, you know, from the inside out. In other words, you start with, in this case, what is the innermost part of this? P list. So P list is the is the most in the, is is the innermost. So you start with P list, and I'm gonna. Here's my. Move your marker. Try board marker. Are they under there? Yeah, there's one under here. Okay. So if you look at the highlighted code here, the first thing you need to access is P list. But P list is not that big of a deal because we know how to access a parameter already. And P list refers to the actual parameter that is on the stack. Are we doing okay so far? The next operation, according to the parentheses, tells me that I have to dereference it first, right? So how do you dereference a pointer? You can put it into a register and then use the indirect addressing mode to dereference it. Okay? So now we have the dereferencing. What are we going to do with the result after the dereferencing? Well, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because I use the notation of a pointer, you know, the dash and the greater than. But a dash and a greater than is nothing more than a shorthand of an asterisk with a dot at the end. Okay, let me just explain that part. P points to Q is really the same thing as dereferencing P. What that is, is a structure, and then you just gonna, uh, put a dot Q here. So these two are functionally the same, even though most people would choose to represent it this way because it is easier to e easier to read. Okay, so knowing that, that means you know we have another dereference on the outside because we have a pointer to p list. So we have another dereference on this side here, and then we say p next over here, and then on top of everything else, we are taking the address up. Now the take the address of operator is kind of difficult to understand or it, it is very misleading. Because in C, it seems like it's an extra operation, but in assembly, it is not an extra operation. To get to the value of something is an extra operation because we usually get to the address first. Yep. I was gonna say it's the reverse in assembly from what it is yeah, in, C. in many ways it is the reverse because we usually have a way to compute the address. And if you want the value at that address, we have to put an extra indirect operand to get to the content at that address. But usually we end up with the address first. So the ad, the emperor's n, which is an extra operator in C, is usually not something extra that you have to do in assembly. Okay. Are there any questions about this part to look at that particular line in a way that is kind of completely nested? So once we know this, the other way to, to improve your your understanding is basically to look at this using a picture. So we have P list, which is a parameter. So you want to kind of indicate this is a parameter, it is on a stack, and it is directly accessible from inside the subroutine. The next thing we want to do is to dereference it. To dereference means we are point this these four bytes is pointing to another four bytes, which is represented by this portion here. Is that okay? So this is another, another four bytes, it is a pointer by itself, and it doesn't hurt to write down the type of this thing here. So we are dealing with, I'm doing a shorthand here. This is a pointer to a pointer to a node. It points to a pointer to a node. 
And when you look at this thing, what does it point to? To a note. Very good. Okay, now this picture is useful because to go from here to here, you know that you have to use an indirect operand. And this one here, I would draw in a slightly different way. In other words, instead of having the pointer to point to anywhere within the structure, I would have it point to the bottom. Because once you know how to get to the beginning part of a struct node, how hard is it to get to a particular field of that struct? Exactly. So once you have this in the register, getting to the address of one of these two members inside the structure is nothing more than an addition. Because the pointer is, the, is already pointed to the beginning of a struct node. If you wanted to point to another member of the struct node, you just have to add a constant to it. And those constants are defined in node.inc, the include file. You just need to know the size of the data member, or of the structure itself, or of the node. Right? There's, no, there's no need to use size of at all. No, I mean, you just need to know this. What I'm saying is the, whatever the defined size is inside of node.inc. Yeah, INC could include both the size of the node and also the displacement from the beginning of a node to each individual member inside a node. So is this helping? I mean, you know, just how to look at the code in C and you know how to draw a picture because the picture really helps. Where is P next? Hmm? Where is P next? Where is P list? P next. P next? The way I divide it right now, P next is here and the value is here. Or is it the other way around? I think this is the right way, right now. But your code should not depend on the ordering of the members. In other words, I should be able to go into node.h, mess around with the ordering, put new stuff into it, as long as I do not change the name of the members and also do not change the width of each member, your code should continue to work. That means you have to use the offset label definitions in node.inc. If you don't, then your code is sensitive to changes to node.h itself. So just to clarify, not only do we have to implement, but we have to implement it so it's universally compatible with changes in all. Exactly. Yay. Well, but that's the, that's the whole point <laughs> of going through all that you know, instruction to you know, make sure that node.inc stays synchronized with node.h automatically. So are there any questions at this point about the implementation? Um, it could just be that it's been a while. Isn't the uh, right here the arrow notation for pointers? If you're like two jumps back, you can use the arrow, it'll jump to the very last item. So you can use that dash and then arrow key. So you can use like a shortcut. I think what you're talking about is oh, where's my <laughs> I keep losing my uh, tripod marker because I keep putting it into my box. Okay, so P list cannot do this. You cannot do this because P list is not a pointer to a node. But once you dereference it, you can make it point to a P list. It's just because it's not a pointer to a node. Because of what it is, what it actually what it is. You mean P list? Right. Yeah, P list is a pointer to a pointer to a node. So that's why you need to dereference it once before you can use it as a pointer. But this picture is useful because this picture really shows you that these four bytes on the stack is your parameter, and it is a pointer to another pointer. This is a four byte pointer as well, but what it points to is no longer a four byte thing. It is an actual structure. And this is already the value of the lowest member of the entire structure. So to get to the address of any other member within the structure, you just have to add the offset to the starting point of the entire structure. Thank you. Is that helpful? Okay. So you might want to kind of take a look 
you know, or you know, just write down this picture because I think this picture is more useful than you know anything that I can say or you know demonstrate using the C code because it is graphically you know displaying the relationship between P list and the various items that you need access to. <laughs> I hear you can write a script to this. Hmm? So I hear you can write a script to this. A script to what? Draw that. To draw that? <laughs> don't tap me. Don't tap me. I don't have time to do it. <laughs> Is that helpful? Yeah, I intentionally picked something like this so that it, you will have to think about, you know, how to translate, you know, C code in a structured way instead of, oh, okay, I can intuitively look at this and know what it is. No, nope, this is so kind of cumbersome that you cannot just say, oh, okay, I know exactly what it is. You have to do it in a much more systematic way, one step at a time. Is that okay? I think I can stop the recorder because I think that really is the uh, pretty much the core part of this. <laughs>